amazing audience we are live in new york whoop 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 <laughs> <laughs> we're recording actually me. from Malt media network studios in new york you should check out a great uh, show about the podcasting industry the word from mouth on itunes at Malt media at M- mouth podcast dot com actually wherever the po- best podcasts are found with us today we have rob low uh spoke with him in sanchez uh, yeah ah say that sanchez yeah so where did i get low from i have no idea and i keep calling you rob low oh really okay well now it's fixed <laughs> I know where that came over? from. <laughs> no, it's life. That's a good thing about life. You get to see exactly uh, yeah. the mistakes we make. Yeah. Yeah, I keep saying it's Rob Lowe. I think there, there's like four or five Robs who are all in podcasting. Karen. And, okay, yeah. not so Karen prob- Sanchez. Yeah, so yeah. 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 That's cool. So we probably... Uh, all right. You <laughs> look like a Sanchez, though. I yeah. I mean, they're here. Yeah. Do you play the guitars? Um, I don't, but I do play a little banjo. <laughs> So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah. great. Well, yeah, we have Rob Sanchez with us. Uh, Rob is going to give us an update uh, as to what he's doing from the last time we spoke. Sounds like fun. Again, Rob, it's a great pleasure to meet you face to face. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's yeah. Just to sh- just to being touch able to give hand. you a hug is better yeah. than uh, <laughs> yeah. The hugging was good. Yeah, <laughs> and he was about to pass me by, right? And he was like, yeah, and yeah, we fixed that pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rob, do yep. tell us, what's up in your world? So, uh, since we spoke, um, we've kind of grown as a network a lot, and we've been focusing a lot more on live events, even more than we were before, and um, I became a father. Wow. So, uh, Congratulations. <laughs> the, the last Shikana one, again. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Becoming a father, I think, was the, the biggest thing that happened. Yeah. What um, did you have? A son? Or a son, son. yeah. Okay. So, Jonathan was born on February 5th. Um, my life completely changed. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Explains the red eyes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. This morning I was late for a meeting because of, you Jonathan. know, I've got a baby. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all good. Yeah. How's your wife? She's doing really well. Yeah. yeah. So luckily we have the flexibility that she can work from home. Um, with the business that she's doing, it's hers, so she can set whatever hour she wants. So she's been able to really be with him. Yeah. Um, that's helped a bit in the transition. And then, the really nice thing is that her parents are here in Manhattan. So actually last night um, we went to stay at the parents' house yeah. so I could make a meeting this morning. And yeah. It's really nice to be able to do that. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's funny though. The, it seems to me that the American dream, if you would, is that you get to be an adult and then you move very, very far from your parents, <laughs> right? Uh, but I'm 3,000 miles from mine. So wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. what I'm seeing is a lot of individuals who really, uh, like we've, so we've come from south and we're coming up to on the eastern side. But yeah. like those, there are a few people who have their aunts not too far, right? Like yeah. in the same lot. Uh, that's a really nice model, isn't it? Yeah, so um, my brother-in-law lives six blocks from us. Yeah. Um, so we're out in Forest Hills in, in Queens. Um, her parents live here in Manhattan. Yeah. And then we've been lucky enough to, um, my my parents are retired, so they've been flying in and staying for a month with yeah. us. And That yeah. helps. Uh, we couldn't have gotten through it without yeah. them. It yeah. helps your sanity. Yeah. yeah. Believe me. Yeah. I, I mean, big up to my parents, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we are here. Yeah. We're able to do this. Uh, two grandparents, uh, so Amanda's parents and uh, my parents. Yeah. yeah? 12 weeks. Yeah. You know? wow. Yes. Yesterday when I spoke <laughs> to her, she said, she said, you know what? God told me something and I'm not going to do it anymore. I was like, what's that? I'm not going to complain and say, Angel, your children are doing this or that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot, you know, it's Definitely, a lot. Yeah. So tell us about the building we're in right now and tell us about yeah. Mass Media Network, please. So you're inside of Voyager HQ, um, which is a travel, they call it a clubhouse because it's a, um, it's a physical space attached to a digital membership. But basically, Fair Portal um, was fu- founded by one person, uh, Sam Jane. He um, grew from a $4,000 Amex loan into a $4 billion in revenue wow. company. It's just massive growth. And he wanted to keep his eye on the travel space. So he decided to build um, a co-working type environment 
where travel startups could come together. Yeah. And uh, we were launching Travel as Your Business at the same time as they were starting. And so we were the third person, not tenant even, third person <laughs> to come into the space. Wow. Um, and then over time, we grew, they grew, we started launching more shows, and we decided to build a studio inside of their location. Yeah. Um, when did Sennheiser yeah. as they come in? So Sennheiser helped uh, underwrite the cost of setting up the studio. Um, they provided all of the mics that we record on yeah. and uh, a lot of the headphones that we use. It's so a beautiful space. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's, it is. Uh, it's been pretty phenomenal to have a, a space. And we actually make it, as we're doing now, uh, available to podcasters. Yeah. And so that's a, a really nice thing to be able to do yeah. for the community, too. Yeah. Well, I highly appreciate it. Yeah. And I'm definitely going to give you as much uh, promotion on my <laughs> side, exactly, Appreciate for what it, you've yeah. done here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me, we cover a, s a scenario, a segment called Your Own Unique Real Shoes, yeah. which is yours, an acronym called yours. And yeah. what I've found is, like when I was preparing for this, one friend said, so what is it going to be, what is going to be the theme? Yeah. And uh, when she gave me a story, I came up with the Your Own Unique Real Shoes, right? Yeah. And that concept is, what have you done to be where you are today? Because an mm. individual will look at your shoes and <laughs> say, wow, they are a great pair of shoes, yeah, right? Yeah. So <laughs> you can see them here. Yeah. Um, they're, they're keds that are stitched like a baseball. Yeah, like a baseball. Yeah. yeah, it's really. And they actually have a home plate on the back oh, of them. Oh, sweet. So, yeah. so <laughs> I would see the shoes and say, wow. But the feet in the shoes, yeah. the journey you've traveled, the challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, give us an example of a challenge on this uh, trek that you've yeah. experienced, please. Um, so I'm actually on the autism spectrum. Oh, and really? Yeah. Um, and so growing up uh, all the way through my life, I've been learning how to interact, how to be, how to communicate, how to be comfortable, how mm. to accept the sensory inputs I have around me and how to compensate for some things that um, you know, are, are unique challenges that I have. But at the same time, it's also learning to embrace the things about me that are unique, yeah. uh, the way my mind works, things that I used to take for granted that I now realize make me very, very unique and special. Yeah. So it, um, that's probably one of the, the biggest things. Uh, there's this concept called camouflage where um, people on the spectrum often uh, adopt habits that um, make them seem like they're not. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm at a point where if I don't share that, people usually can't guess. Well, I um, couldn't guess, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's something that I'm, I also want to make sure that I do share so that people realize that not only can you live a, a full and happy life when you're on the spectrum, but there are things that you can do that no one else can that you really should embrace because you have a way of contributing to the world and it's not a disease or an issue or anything like that. It's literally just who you are. Yeah. And um, that's never blessing. wrong. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, we're actually working on a, a podcast concept called Actually It's a Superpower. Hmm, where we want to discuss. Yeah. So I did law school in about three hours a week. Wow. Um, I studied only on the train to and from and I was running three startups at the same time. Wow. I could not have done that with any other brain structure than the one I had. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, I've had a conversation with one young lady and she said, uh, embrace doing more things if you can. Yeah. And we've seen that, like, usually some people say you need to stay focused, right? Yeah. And I agree, focus on one thing, but how much of that thing I think would vary according to the individual. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. What would you say to the individual out there that's, I mean, keeping from going that, that, that is saying, no, I have this, so I cannot. What yeah. would you say to them? Well, um, usually if there's a downside to something, there's also an upside. Um, and what I would say is that you can always learn to mitigate downside issues. Mm. You, you can f build strategies. But if you don't embrace the thing that is special about what is going on, then you're missing the re like the reason yeah. you're missing the thing that's that's important there um i have a network mind and i have the ability to do three-dimensional mapping in my head hmm. but i struggle with interactions with people yeah. <laughs> and if you watch my hands you'll see that i do a lot of things that are designed to sort of like calm myself and, yeah. and so on um so yeah like one of those is a strategy for uh taking care of the way that I think and interact and the other one is something that no one through no amount of work could ever replicate. Yeah. 
Mm. Um, I love it. Yep. What's the best way for someone who's listening to connect with you? Uh, so probably through LinkedIn. Mm. Um, however, just say that you're connecting because of this interview. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, email rob at mouthmedianetwork.com. Yeah. Rob Sanchez, not Rob Lowe. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, in closing, my friend, when you heard that this Caribbean guy was coming to meet you face <laughs> to face, what did yeah. you think? Um, just happiness. I'm somebody who really does better one-on-one -on -one and, and yeah. in person and so yeah. uh, it's always nice to have a, a chance to sit down yeah. yeah your interview is great though like i remember it like it was yesterday it's funny in the midst of a thousand and some how certain things like peak out and yeah. certain people like peer through mm -hmm. it's more me than the individual yeah, yeah. but I, I love the concepts that you shared especially yeah. the family aspect of life and to see it grow now mm -hmm. is just amazing yeah. yeah in closing what would you like to share with our amazing audience um just that i love connecting with people especially people who are working on the podcast space and i'm always i want to learn as much as i can about the way people approach and the way people think so uh, reach out and share uh what, what's going on and um, I want to do more in-person events and more meeting people and more making sure that we're physically together. That's not just around conferences. Yeah. And so um, let's grab dinner, let's hang out, get coffee. Yeah. I think that'd be really good. Love it. Yeah. Rob, it's a great pleasure having you on what is inspired by 12-minute convos with <laughs> Angel Jules. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Boom.